Hello and welcome to Learn With Me, Mrs. Sullivan. Today, I'm excited to share with you the best ever math facts game, zero or 10. The objective is to create either an equation that has the answer of either zero or an answer of 10. Let's find out how to play. All you need to play this game, families and friends and teachers, is a deck of cards, just a regular deck of cards. The version I'm sharing today is intended for primary students, and I've removed the face cards. Um, the ace counts for one, and the rest of the cards count for the number represented on the card. If you wanted to play with older children, I would just keep in my face cards and make them worth 11, 12, and 13. All right, here's how you play. So you have a stack of cards and you overturn one card. Everyone is scanning and looking because the objective is to either find an equation that makes a zero or an equation that makes a 10. And the first person to shout it out and demonstrate that the, this equation they've discovered is correct, is the winner of that round and gets to keep those cards. So the first card um, I digitally flipped over is a four. And I'm thinking, what number can be added to this to make a 10? So I know hmm, if I turn over a six next, I'm gonna shout out 10. And I'm also thinking what number can be added to this to make a zero. So I'm also thinking if the next card is a four, I'm gonna shout out zero. So I'm looking for a six or a four for the next combinations I might possibly make. So here comes the next card. Ah, the next card is three. So mm, the cards are not the same number. They're not gonna make a zero. Um, so I'm gonna think, what number do I get when I add these together? So I'm adding a four and a three and I'm getting seven. And I'm thinking, well, how close is a seven to a 10? So seven eight, nine, 10. I could be looking for another card that's a three, and then I could make a 10. Well, if I got a three, I could also take it away and make a zero. But I also might be thinking about a seven. If I got a card that was a seven, I could have seven minus seven. So I'm looking for a three or a seven or a four or a six. Mm. So I'm trying to keep these combinations in my head and the next card gets turned over. All right, the next card is an ace in my scenario. So again, I have to look at, because now I have a new piece of information. So I already know these are seven. Now I'm gonna look at here, showing you the first and the last one. So I have my four and my one, that makes five five and three. Well, I don't get a zero or a 10 by either adding or subtracting. Now I'm going to look at this combination here, hmm, three and a one. Well, that makes a four. So I recognize something's happening by using all the cards. I can make these two cards as a four and this four. So I would shout out zero. And my equation could be four minus three minus one equals zero. Some kids like to get tricky and do three plus one minus four still makes a zero. So shouting out either zero or 10 as we see the combination that will make a successful answer of either zero or 10. And the winner would get to gather those cards and keep them in a pile. And of course, we're looking for whoever has the most cards at the end um, to keep playing. Now, sometimes we play where they only get to keep the cards that they used in their equation. So here I'd keep all three cards. But in another scenario, I might not, okay? All right, so we're gonna play one more round. So I'm thinking what number can be added to this to make a 10? I'm looking for a two to make a 10. And of course, to make a zero, I'm looking for an eight. Hmm, my next card is an ace. I'm currently at nine. If I had another ace, I could make 10. I still might like to have a two to go with my eight to make a 10. Or I could have 
an eight or an ace and take away and make a zero. So my brain's primed to look for certain combinations already. Here comes the next card. Okay, so I have a four. So I'm looking at my combinations. I've got five here and eight, or I've got nine and four, or I have 13 and one. Nothing is making either a zero or a 10. So the next card gets turned over. So I'm looking here again at my combinations of things that I could make. And here is an interesting possibility because someone might shout either zero or 10. So if I were making 10, I could say eight plus three, and that takes me to 11 and then minus one. So eight plus three minus one equals 10. Or I could make a zero with four minus one minus three. So I can make either a zero or a 10 from this combination of cards. So plain zero or 10, it really is the best math facts game ever. I love it. It's super portable. All it takes is a deck of cards and you're off and you're learning and you're really thinking about math. It is a super awesome game and I hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching. Learn with me. This is Sullivan.